Hello and welcome along to this video. This is going to be the next tutorial in the series. In the last tutorial, which was the first video, we demonstrated FSX Pilot the basics. Uh, so we demonstrated how to load the sim, pick your plane and starting location. Then I demonstrated how to take off, obviously with FSX Pilot. Use the interactive FSX Pilot menu with options which will change and then I demonstrated the autopilot panel with your boxes like heading, altitude, speed which you can change or FSX pilot may change depending on what stage of flight you are in and of course the box where you can type in commands yourself the console box. Now we're venturing into the realm of creating flight plans and uh, in this tutorial it's probably going to be a shorter video but I just wanted to talk about how to update the navigation data in your simulator so there are two ways to approach flight planning if you have bought your simulator and you do not want to use the most up-to-date navigation data whether it be FSX or P3D you can use the inbuilt default flight planner which will create a flight plan for you and you can put that into FSX pilot modify you know anything you would like and fly the flight plan However, the data in FSX, the navigation data, is from about 2007. P3D's data is probably um, later than 2007, but it's still not up to date. If you have no idea what I'm talking about by navigation data, what I mean is every month we have a new ERAC, the Aeronautical um, Air Cycle, which is, um, we're currently on 1808 um, for this month, and on the 15th, I think, of August, it changes to 1809. Um, which will be, you know, the, the August one. We're currently still on 1808, and uh, each ERAC cycle will change each month, like I say, and it will contain things like um, all the latest waypoints, all the latest runways, all the latest SIDs, which I mentioned in the previous video, and all the latest stars. It will also contain VORs, NDBs, essentially getting all your data up to date, and these are very important for flight plans. Um, because of the fact that um, if you want to have the latest up-to-date data everything has to be in tune with each other your sim has to have the latest data FSX pilot has to have the latest data and unfortunately if you are using the most up-to-date data the default flight planner will not work because that runs off the the, um, the data that was originally in the sim so what I'm saying is if, if you have say P3D if you update the navigation data you can't use the default flight planner anymore because it won't work uh, because it will still be running off old data it doesn't recognize new data unfortunately but don't worry there is a way to uh, get around that there are websites which can create flight plans for you using the most up-to-date data and this is what I do so I'm going to be talking about how to update your data in uh, in this video it's relatively simple with elements that can be complicated but once you've got it I think um, you know you won't forget how to do it and it, it's pretty um, easy to do once you know how to do it it's just grasping it really at first so there are two parts that need to be updated when you update your navigation data the first is the simulator itself to make sure that the the data in the simulator is up to date and the next thing is FSX pilot to make sure that the data in FSX pilot itself is up to date so I'll be linking things in the description firstly to update the simulators data there is a very helpful website which is free and is put together by someone who creates files for uh, downloading and then you use the automatic installer um, to run them and put them into the simulator and they contain the latest navigation data so there are two things that you will need from this website the first one I think is called um, the, the website talks you through it all but I think it's called FSX world nav aids and then the second thing is called world update and both of these files together um, they're both uh, zip folders so you have to unzip them both of them together will update all the data in your sim both have automatic installers in there they're just applications um, that you have to find and it's very easy you just select um, whichever simulator you're on in the installer and uh, just select which areas you want to be updated 
and um, and yeah it's, it's very simple so I'm gonna just uh, quickly show you how you would run through the um, the installer uh, for both of them. Menu. So let's go to documents. Documents window preview. F Mint 460 FSXP 3D World Navigate. That's the first one called FSXP 3D World Navigate. FSXP 3D World Navigate. I'm just going to see. FSXP manual. Flight Simulator. FSXP 3D World Navigate 3906. Type it. Yeah, I do have it unzipped. Perfect. So we go in here. This is the uh, the first one you'll download from this website, which I'll link in the description. Europe files two of ten. And this has files three of ten. All sorts of files in here to actually do it. We're going to keep going down. FSXP three D navigate and smaller seven of ten. To that. Enter on that. That's the application. And it will say FSXP edition radio button check. Sim version selection. And I have FSX and P three D, so it's got that. Three D version four radio button check. Three D version four. Okay, so let's say I want to patch P three D version four. This isn't going to work properly because I have already got it installed. I can press Enter on that and then make sure it's selected and go to select. FSXP 3D Navigate Installer, R3D V4.3, Region Selector Grouping, List Africa. And then it says Region Installer. This has a list of regions. You'll need to make sure they're all selected. You can see you've got America, Africa, America, America, America South, North, America, Australasia, South, Australasia, 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 Australasia and Oceania, Europe, 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 Europe Far East, Middle East, Russia, 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 Russia not selected. Space for Russia. Russia. Status state region. S selected grouping. Use alternate airport files. C doc. Check box not checked. Just leave that button. as it is. And you can see it says Conflict uninstall button. and conflicts. Uninstall button. If I hadn't already installed them before, which obviously I have because mine's up to date, it would say uninstall, uh, install there and you could do that. But we're just going to exit out of that. Conflicts not region selector grouping list. Because we, uh, we don't need it. Now the second one is called. Just keep going out of that. Sorry. Review. Oh, going to documents again. Well, documents. And it's called World Update. 506, World Update. I have it compressed. Again, World comes update, compressed. World update 4063. I have it uncompressed here. World update item 0012058. Now this has a lot of files in it because it uses these to help install it. So zero, we're zero. just going to keep going down until we go right down to the bottom, and I'll show you the application. This one is uh, even list. easier. Auto installer 5558. That's the one you want in this folder. Sim version selection, as you can see, same as before. P3D. Make sure it's selected. Auto uninstall button, install button. And you can see you've uninstall got all install, button. install uninstall button. Uninstall all. Uninstall all button. And that's uninstall button. Uninstall button. You got oh install uninstall uninstall, all uninstall all. Uh, if I go to install, space red auto install dialog file s to be updated zero file s already up to date six hundred ninety nine missing files zero no update is needed okay button. Yep. So whatever that said, it says no update is needed. Auto it says everything is up to date zero missing files. For you, when you click install, it may take a while and it will update all your files in the sim. World update window. I so let me exit out of that. So those are the two things you need to get from that website. They're free, they're compressed, and you just run the uh, installers as I just demonstrated, and they will uh, update the data in your simulator itself, whether it be P3D or FSX. The next part, which may get um, a little bit confusing is actually updating FSX Pilot's data because it's no good updating your simulator if FSX Pilot itself isn't actually up to date. So how do we do that? Well, you have to get a Navigraph subscription. This is paid. It is on the Navigraph website. Uh, I would recommend you get the FMS yearly subscription. All that means is that you get every ARAC in a year for 12 months. I think it's about 20 euros. It's very good. All I can say um, about the subscriptions is do not get any subscription with the charts don't make that mistake because you'll be paying way over what we need and the charts aren't accessible to us we only need the FMS data and uh, the yearly one is probably the best plan so once you have that you want to go to manual install on the Navigraph website uh, the, the manual install link and go down to um, well, there'll be a big table, basically, of all the different formats you can download the latest data in. We want to download it from the one that says PSS Native. So let me show Menu. you in my documents. Document. P. Items view list. Possible quality. P. PSS Native 1808. That's the one. PSS Native 1808. That's the one you want to download on the table. Keep going down until you find PSS Native um, and that's that's the one we we want to download. I think there might be two that are similarly named, but you just want the one that says PSS Native. Anyway, it will come as a compressed um, folder, and the way we have to update FSX Pilot's um, 
data is in the main FSX pilot directory. There's a folder called ERAC. Let me demonstrate this. FSX pilot. Still everything. List FSX FSX There we go. Now in here are all your files relating to the navigation data. Uh, some of them I have no idea what they're about, but you've got one called app, one called. AWI, and you've got cycle info, and you've got NDBs. Obviously, we know what they are. That's a readme. That's runways. That's something for X plane, which is another simulator. We don't need that. SIDs, which I talked about in the last video. Stars, which I also talked about. VORs, and one called WPT. So they're all important. But the most important thing is the naming of them and the file types. So you can see in this ERAC folder they are all text documents and they are all the, the names of them, for example, VOR and STAR and all that, they are all not in caps. They're literally just called STAR or SID. When you get the Navigraph data still in here, documents, documents let me keep Eric going across to column here. Uh, where did I put it? Oh, we want PSS native, don't we, here. This is what you'll get from Navigraph. You want to go into navigation data here. Then you'll get, you'll notice some of these files sound kind of the same as what's in FSX Pilot's ERAC. You've got cycle data, PSS APT, PSS AWY. And they're all DAT files. So once you've unzipped the folder, what you want to do is open these in Notepad. You want to make sure you're saving them as text files. And you want to make sure they're called the same as in FSX Pilot's ERAC folder. So let's say the Runways file, for example. If we go into ERAC, there's a file called RWY, which means runways. This contains all the runways for every airport, what they're called, the heading, the coordinates, etc. And you can see it's no caps, RWY, that's all it's called in the ERAC folder, text document. However, in the nav data folder provided by Navigraph, it's called PSS RWY and it's a DAT file. So you want to open Notepad, you want to go to the file name box and you want to save it again but you want to save it under RWY. Make sure there's no caps and you have to remove the PSS from the beginning. It shouldn't be called PSS, it should just be called RWY, no caps and make sure it's saved as a text file. You might want to make a new folder for all of this. So you want to turn all the folders, uh, all the files, sorry, that Navigraph have given you into, you want to essentially just make sure that you've removed the PSS from the beginning, like with Runway. Uh, PSSRWY, you shouldn't say PSSRWY, it should just be PSS, it should just be RWY. And you want to make sure that it is not in capital, it should just be lowercase RWY. Same with, for example, that one, PSS SID. You want to remove PSS. You want to call it just SID. You want it to be no caps and as a text document. And then you just copy all of your new text documents that you've renamed from Navigraph, copy them across into your ERAC there, hit replace, and you should be good. Um, that That's basically the way you do it. Like I said, it's a bit complicated. Feel free to uh, leave a comment if you're unsure about this and email me as well, blindflightsim44 at gmail.com. There's the BVI pilots mailing list. There's uh, my Twitter at bflightsim. There's lots of places to get help with this. So remember, you first update the files in your sim with the free website, which I'll link in the description. And you have the, the two things you download. You have the world update and the FSX um, P3D World NavAids package and they both have automatic installers you run them and they're pretty self-explanatory and um, and then you have to update FSX Pilots data and you do that by getting the Navigraph subscription downloading PSS native and then changing the file names so that they reflect the same as in the FSX Pilot ERAC folder and save them as text files not DAT and then you copy them all across and you should be um, should be good. Um, other than that, that's how you update your navigation data. Uh, and that, that hopefully will work for you. 
and um, if you want to check it and you know of an airport that has different runways to what's in the sim I'm just trying to think of an example for example um, there's Manchester in the UK Echo Golf Charlie Charlie which previously had runways four left and four right for example these runways were changed to runway five left and five right now without the updated navigation data the sim still thinks they're four left and four right but when you update it it will show them as five left and five right so if you want to check it you can do something like that and you will know then because the runways will be correct as of you know ERAC 1808 which is currently now August 2018 uh, if they're correct then you've updated the navigation data correctly the reason this updating navigation data is so important is because you have to have it updated if you want to use up-to-date flight plans um, these websites that create flight plans for you will use up-to-date data uh, with waypoints and things so you need to make sure yours is up to date unless of course like I say you just want to stick with the good old default flight planner in whichever sim you are using again feel free to ask any questions let's get rid of that shall we FSX pilot can go uh, I hope this has been helpful again it's a little complicated but once you've done it once you will be able to continue doing it right thanks for watching